Oh, I think it's time to connect you to more of the food that makes you happy, don't you? For the Kingdom Report, I'm Wade Heath, back here with another Eat Disney Dining Review, a segment where we head on into the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim and the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando to bring you some of the very best eats that each resort has to offer. And today, you see it right there, we're heading on into Epcot, the one park in all of Walt Disney World that seems to be under the knife the most. Yep, this park is undergoing some major enhancements, some major refurbishments, and all-out construction to bring on new experiences ahead of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary in 2021. Certainly over the course of time, Epcot has become one of those parks that is definitely known for educating as well as inspiring its guests. But one of the other great things that it's become known for over time is its cuisine. Across Walt Disney World property, there might just be no greater place to find a meal than here at Epcot, especially along World Showcase, where 11 countries adorn a giant lagoon, and you can walk on into each individual country and taste a piece of authenticity when it comes from that region. Today, we're at the Kingdom of Morocco, wedged just between Japan and France. This pavilion might just be my favorite. It feels the most authentic out of all of the World Showcase pavilions and definitely envelops you in the culture and the sights and sounds of what Morocco might actually be like. China might play a close second to this uh, as my favorite pavilion in terms of detail, but this pavilion is something else. And today we are going to take a bite out of a slice of Morocco at their quick service restaurant option, the Tangerine Cafe. The Tangerine Cafe is their only quick service option here, and I would invite you to explore this if you are feeling a little bit more adventurous. If you're not a burger and fries person, if you're not a chicken nuggets and a pizza person, if you can feel comfortable getting out beyond that, the Tangerine Cafe has some unique bites for you. You'll take a look at the menu here and realize right off the bat, I mean, you see lamb, right? Yeah, you see lamb, falafel, you also have lentil salad, marinated olives in here, and of course for kids, hamburgers and chicken nuggets are available. Just a great cross-section of Mediterranean delights for you here, and the price point, very reasonable for Disney Quick Service. I am going to go with the Lamb Combo, 6095 shawarma platter there, as you can see. And keep in mind with this restaurant, it is like an open-air marketplace, a lot of open doors around this facility. The uh, reason why I mention that is because there are times of year where Disney World is extremely hot, also times of year where it's chilly and very windy out. So if it's like that outside, you're going to see that reflected inside. Lots of big wind gusts if it's windy, and very warm inside if it's hot outside. Something that this restaurant does that I really appreciate, because I think they know people are hesitant when it comes to these new types of foods or different types of foods, is they package up everything right off the bat and present it to you right next to the register. So before you even order, walk in and take a look at what it is you're thinking about buying, and that way you can see it up close. It's also great for kids if they have a very unique uh, palette, and by unique I mean incredibly basic like most children they like what they like if you have kids that only like what they like this is a great way to acquaint them with the food that they might enjoy exploring uh, potentially if you want to go ahead and buy it for them but they get to see it up front so they don't have to worry about it they know exactly what they're getting my order was up very quick probably within three and a half minutes friendly cast member delivered it on over to me and look at that plate now it might be a little deceiving right off the bat uh, some folks might see this and go that doesn't seem like a whole lot of food uh, it is deceiving okay and the reason why I say that is because this plate is very large it just doesn't seem like that because I don't really have anything next to it at the moment to uh, showcase to you the relevancy of how large it is but we take a glance around the plate here and you see the uh, onions with the lamb and that sour cream, the Moroccan bread, your couscous salad, and of course your tabbouleh and your gobs of hummus. Oh my, there was more hummus there than I knew what to do with. But I decided to grab a fork and dive in because the couscous salad was what I was going to go for first. It is served chilled for you. And uh, there is a great taste to this. It's sweet, but has a light sort of spice to it. And uh, I'm not saying it's spicy at all. I don't want you to think that. But there's like a little bit of a spice to it that makes it very delightful. It's a great counterbalance to how sweet it is. And then, of course, the lamb itself. I do so much enjoy lamb. I don't get enough of it in my uh, daily life. Lamb here is plump, is juicy, 
full of flavor, can I highly suggest getting the lamb. If you're somebody that's never had lamb, you gotta try it. And if you're somebody that likes lamb, this really is the place for you. Now, something that I do with each plate that I get from this location is, of course, I open up that Moroccan bread, I spackle it with the hummus, and it gives me a great foundation to start building my own sort of pita sandwich. Yeah, look at this. I stuff it full of everything that's on the plate, and then it becomes like a gigantic sandwich for me, and all of these flavors mix together to create something that really is spectacular in the end. And now you get sort of a sense of how much food there is, because I've got a giant hand, right? That's my giant hand there, and this pita is sort of uh, completely stuffed full of all of these great things from the plate, and there's still so much left on the plate. Look at that, there's still so much left behind that uh, I even started adding on as I was taking bites, but you really get a sense here of just how thick this is. Look at how packed I made this pita, and it is something that, dare I say, you could probably share with somebody else, but I'm a piggy, so you know me, I don't share. Uh, but it is something that you could probably share with somebody else if you were deciding to do so. So something to definitely keep in mind if you have light eaters in your family. But I ate this sucker all the way down to the end, and look, I still had food left over. I still had goodies. And I was so full, I was so stuffed, I didn't think I could go on. I didn't think there was another opportunity that I could possibly go for dessert. But then I remembered something. I remembered who I was, and I grabbed the baklava. They do have a dessert case uh, located just off to the side of the main register. There is a whole like pastry case that you can choose Moroccan-themed delights from. And of course, I had to go with the baklava. Uh, this is a relatively small dessert, but I will say after eating all that I ate, that was just fine with me. Uh, it needed to be small, but I bring up the size because it was uh, 425 so 425 for this so I definitely thought that it was a little small for 425 uh, but definitely something that you know as it's packed with its various nuts and sort of drizzled in honey it has its sort of flaky almost flaky like croissant consistency to it um, it is something that has a very sort of delicate sweetness um, the honey packs a punch for sure but there's a delicate sweetness to it uh, the whole way through because I think that the nuts really balance it out so definitely something with its chocolatey goodness uh, that I think you, you should go for if you're willing to fork out the 425 just if you've never had baklava if you've had baklava before uh, you don't need to pay 425 for what you got here. Okay, so uh, you can completely avoid it. There are other great things in the case, but the baklava, great way to sort of, uh, you know, complement the meal. All right, wrapping things up here. Some of the reasons you may want to consider skipping the Tangerine Cafe in Morocco might just be because you or your friends and family are not adventurous eaters. And look, you know your friends and family better than anybody. If this is a place you can honestly see them not enjoying the food, it's okay. There are plenty of other locations around World Showcase in which to plan for, so I would advise doing that. And if you're somebody that needs at a certain temperature in order to enjoy your meal, keep in mind that this is very much an open-air marketplace type atmosphere, even this restaurant. Therefore, if it's hot and humid like it is most of the year in Orlando, you're going to feel that reflected inside too. And young children, this might not be the greatest place for them, as there isn't a whole lot to keep them entertained and like I said uh, when it comes to the menu it's for very adventurous palates or uh, more adventurous than the uh, lay person but in addition to that even the kids menu is very small and uh, just not a whole lot of options for them so that I would say probably to be considered in your planning if you are deciding as to whether or not you should come to the Tangerine Cafe in Morocco and of course some of the reasons you absolutely want to visit the Tangerine Cafe in Morocco might just be because of the healthy options you can find here. A lot of locations in World Showcase that I eat at, well, I walk away feeling like I need a nap. I never feel like that here. Even after eating all that I ate, I still felt great and uh, just full, but uh, definitely not weighed down. And it's got some culturally unique food that allows you to really connect to the theming. It's got shareable plate sizes. You saw how much food I had. You could absolutely share that. And then, of course, the value for the price is fantastic. Disney prices, of course. Uh, this pavilion also has two other table service restaurants attached to it. The Spice Road Table on the waterfront. And then, of course, Restaurant Marrakech in the back of the pavilion. All things to consider on your next Epcot visit. 
And in closing, I would definitely say that my overall grade for the Tangerine Cafe is going to be a solid B+. Cast members here are terrific. The food is always fresh and very healthy. And I always walk away going, wow, not only is the place clean, but I'm definitely coming back and I'm bringing my friends because the Tangerine Cafe is that good. If you disagree with the grade or you'd like me to review other locations in Dining Walt Disney World or perhaps Disneyland, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below and we'll definitely follow up with you. And if you haven't already, might I suggest going ahead and subscribing to the channel, making sure that that notification bell is rung so that you get notified every time we have new content for you. That would be Tuesday and Thursday. And then, of course, our live show Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. It's been fun dining with you. For the Kingdom Report, I'm Wade Heath. We will see you next time. To all who come to this happy place, welcome.